Welcome to Part 3 of Project Assistance four-part series on Variance Analysis Concepts in Microsoft Project 2013. In Part 3, we will cover how Microsoft Project creates and helps you manage work variances in Microsoft Project 2013. As you may recall, in Part 1 we did an overview of how variance analysis works in Microsoft Project. And in Part 1, we discussed the difference between the original estimate fields, work cost, start, finish, and duration, and the baseline fields. Today, we want to focus on the difference between current estimated work and baseline work. Whenever baseline work is different than work, a work variance will be generated. In Microsoft Project, if I wish to see work-related fields, I can apply the work table. In this case, we can see that the work field contains the current estimate and that the baseline work field contains the original estimate. We can see that there are variances whenever there's a difference between the baseline and the work. Let's look at a more detailed view of how this operates. Here's an example where a task was originally scheduled to have seven hours worth of work and now has 159 hours of variance. What happened here? In this case, the resource who was assigned to work on this task put five hours worth of work into this task and recognized that was what was originally scheduled to be a very small task in fact, in fact has turned into a very large task. We can filter for variances in our plan as well. How might we do that? Well the first thing we might think about is how, how variances get generated. If I were for example to collect actuals on a 64 hour task called identify all table data if the actual work on this task was 16 hours we would expect the remaining work to be 48, which project will calculate automatically. But what if the resource who worked on this task felt that the remaining work was 56 hours? Project will combine the 16 and the 56. It will modify the work field, or the current estimated work field, to be 72 hours. In this case, our original estimate was 64. Our work is now 72, or our current estimated work is 72. And there's a forecasted variance of eight hours. Why is it forecasted? Well, there's still remaining work left. Maybe there's something we can do to drive out that variance. But if this task finishes with the current estimate at completion, we will, in fact, have an eight-hour variance on this task. If we look at how Microsoft Project does reporting, The basic concepts are typically thought about in terms of how we view data in Microsoft Project. So a view is a combination of a filter, a table, and a group. A Microsoft Project view brings together a table, a group, and a filter. So let's take a brief look at how we might filter information in Microsoft Project. On the View tab of my ribbon, I can hit the drop down for filters. You see it has a little icon of a filter here on the left. If I choose more filters, there's a filter called over budget. In this case it's cost over budget. If I edit the cost over budget field, it's going to talk about the cost and the baseline cost. Now in this case, if I have cost assigned to my resources, these tasks in fact, will be over cost. In part four of our series, we'll go deeper into how cost is, is calculated and how Microsoft Project displays cost over allocations. I can explore any one of these filters to tell me what it's trying to display for me. So for example, if I scroll down work over budget, 
I can edit this task. And it says to look at anything where the actual work is greater than the baseline work. And the baseline work is not zero. So here's a case where it's saying if the actuals have exceeded the baseline, we want to see this task. Let's see what happens if we apply this filter. Now in this case, nothing has come back. This can be puzzling when this occurs. Okay, so let's take another, let's take another closer look at this filter. What was it really telling us? It said that the task actual work had to be greater than the baseline work. In our case, we're looking for forecasted variances. So what we might say is, let's look for work that's greater than baseline work. So I can change this filter, actually, if I wish. I can save it. I can apply it. And now it actually brings back just those tasks where the work exceeds the baseline work, which is to say that there's a variance. I could get that same information by creating a filter that says if variance is greater than zero, which is what all these tasks are doing. So there are, there are a variety of ways for us to isolate where work is over budget. When work is over budget, oftentimes cost is over budget as well. So in part four, we'll explore this in greater detail.